Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and right over there is Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. How are you? Hi, Nikki Kinzer. I'm so good. Feeling awesome. strong. Now, we're doing this is a little bit of a time shifted episode. And yes. I, I want to say that out loud because uh, you by now will be coming back from Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. How do you think your trip will have been? Oh, I think it's going to be fa- fantastic. <laughs> it will have been fantastic. It will have been fantastic. Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. I can't wait to hear hear for real how that trip will yes. have been. But as people are listening to this, especially our, our uh, fantastic Patreon supporters who get this a little bit early, they need to be thinking about you celebrating with your sister. Yes. Happy birthday, sister. Happy birthday, sister. That's right. right. Uh, we are talking about, uh, so you're going to share a little bit of a personal story. Yes. Uh, today about I something am. that you're going through. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what it means to be in and get out of autopilot. Before we do that today, though, head over to Take Control ADHD. You can get to know us a little bit better. You know the drill. Subscribe to us. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list and we'll send you an email each time a new show is released. You can connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD. And if you haven't, please consider jumping over to patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast and uh, throw us a buck or three or five a month. Uh, We would really appreciate your support there. It helps to grow the show. It helps to add new great things to the show. It helps us to upgrade our equipment and pay for time and production and put food on the table. So uh, for those who are contributing to helping uh, grow this part of our careers, this podcasting part, uh, we deeply thank you. Uh, And don't forget, any Patreon subscribers get to access our live show in the uh, Take Control uh, podcast private group on Facebook. You can join us and you can uh, interact with us. We would love to hear from you and see you and and uh, hear your questions. So that's it. Accountability groups are still open for spring. Last day. So today, today is the very last day. The last day. Yes. So if you're listening to this, you know, as soon as it comes out, (laughs) then uh, you definitely need to sign up. Um, And but this is the thing. The reason I'm bringing it up is that most people probably will listen to this after the fact. And that's totally Mm -hmm. fine. We get that right. You listen to podcasts whenever you want to. Yeah. Uh, um, But what I want you to know is that I do do these accountability groups um, every three months or so. And so um, if you want to be a part of one and you didn't get to be a part of the spring groups, uh, check out the link um, to the my website and get on the waiting list because then you will be one of the first people to be notified of the next group, which will uh, be yes. in July, I think, June or yeah. July. I can't remember exactly. By now it's coming around the corner. It'll be in the summertime. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And what, a, what a great time. What a great time to to get in, get those new projects. Some of those projects that have been kicking your butt. You get bet. Get an accountability group together and uh, get them done. Uh, absolutely. Outstanding. So there you All go. Right. Let's talk about getting out of autopilot, Nikki Kinzer. What are you going through right now? Okay. Well, this is interesting. A couple of different things. I get inspired by my clients. And um, and so this, this show was partly inspired by a client and inspired by something that I'm doing that in my own journey. So it, it's it's coming together. Um, one of the conversations I had with my client um, recently was around mindfulness and how we can practice mindfulness and how that can help navigate ADHD. Um, mm-hmm. But there was something else that I've been doing uh, in the last, gosh, I guess I started the book in December and just finished it about a month ago. And that was The Happiness Project from Gretchen Rubin. Oh, fantastic. Yes. And so, gosh, I mean, I was reading some of the first part of the book and I'm thinking, oh, I think she's writing to me. Like, I think she might as well have said, dear Nikki, this book is for you. Like, (laughs) (laughs) it was so, I really, I mean, things that she said, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm totally saying that myself. So, the autopilot. That was also um, part of the conversation when I was talking to to the client about mindfulness. Is that you know feeling that we're sort of sort of on autopilot. We're just sort of going through the motions. Is what I kind of um, how I describe it. You know, you get up, you go to work, you come home, you go to bed, you start again. Okay, well that sounds really boring. <laughs> <laughs> when I say that, get up, go to work, come home, go to bed, start again. Like, I know there's a lot more that's going on during the day. 
<laughs> than that. Um, and it's not that boring. Um, but I still feel kind of like I'm, I'm still sort of on some kind of auto- autopilot and I'm trying to figure out like where that's coming from. And one of the things I did realize recently that I think helps ease some of the um, pressure or the guilt that I have in the evenings when I want to shut mm-hmm. down is Monday through Thursday, I work with clients pretty much all day. And so by the time I'm done, I am exhausted, mentally um, exhausted, not so much physically because I'm you know, sitting or standing in the same place, but definitely mentally exhausted. So I've given myself a little bit of a break on those days because I feel like I need that downtime. I need to be able to do something that doesn't require a lot of thinking, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But the other days, like on the weekends and on Fridays, like I just do podcasting. I just do podcasting with you on Fridays. You know, (laughs) like that's what you do. It's not that big of a deal. (laughs) It is a big deal. It's a huge deal. Yeah. So, but well, you know, and and I think it's important to recognize, and we've talked about this before, that that thinking is a high calorie burn activity, right? And when you have to be on, (laughs) when you're working with clients, when you're helping solve problems, when you're coaching, that is a high calorie burn. There's no reason to just isolate this to emotionally tired. You can be physically tired from thinking real, real hard. That's a thing, and it's okay. That's and podcasting true. too. I do, after I have a long day of podcasting, when you're just when you're on, you have to focus yeah. on the words that are coming out of your mouth. When you really have to work it, it's tiring. It's it really tiring. And and that's I think we we've earned that to well, be able to say I'm tired. And, I didn't and run I, a marathon, but I'm tired. I'm tired. And I think that that's kind of the conclusion that I've come to is that it is okay. Like I have to give myself that same grace and, and understand that because one of my goals all the time, every client is to be present with them. You know, anytime I'm with a client, I have to be present with them. I have to mm-hmm. be very mindful. And it does. It takes a lot of energy. And so kind of getting back to where I was at with the happiness project, um, as I said, she was saying things that really came up for me. Like, am I happy? Well, I think I'm happy. (laughs) That's a weird, I think so. Like, I don't feel like I'm in a midlife crisis. Like I, I know I love the work I do. Absolutely love the work I do. Love my family. I have great friends. Everything seems to be good. So why am I questioning if I'm happy? I mean, it's just weird, right? Like, yeah, yeah. but but when you ask that question in general, like, are you happy? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think so. Um, and it's also an issue for me because I'm a homebody. I like being at home. I enjoy being at home. Um, mm-hmm. I am not that person that has to leave the house every day. Um, I don't have to have a busy social life. Um, but at the same time, I feel like I, I should. Like, I should be that person. So then oh, I feel that and you that are guilt. the main advocate for dropping the should, I Nikki know. Kinzer. But there is. It's like that that thing of like, well, I should want this because then maybe I'd be happy. But I am happy. I don't know. I I know I'm probably confusing the heck out of everybody, but this is I don't think so. I don't think so. I really think that this is that you are not alone. And I think this is this is one of those things you feel like you are totally alone, but you're in good company. Yes. Right? Thank you. That because you are yeah, absolutely I feel a little crazy right now. Yeah. <laughs> even talking yeah. about it. But but it is. It's just a it's it's an interesting thing. So I've learned a lot about Gretchen um, because her whole journey is about herself and how she found um, happiness. And so if you don't know about this book, what it is, it's called The Happiness Project. And um, she basically how she, well, I'll just uh, explain it the way that she introduces it. it. It's an approach to changing your life. First is the preparation stage when you identify what brings you joy, satisfaction, and engagement, and also what brings you guilt, anger, boredom, and remorse. Um, the second piece of it is making resolutions. So this is when you identify the concrete actions that are going to boost your happiness. And then comes the interesting part, keeping those resolutions. Um, so the is way- interesting the right word there? <laughs> I know. Well, and that's- terrifying, difficult, challenging, (laughs) impossible part, keeping your resolution. But this is the thing that she learned. If you read through the whole book, there are things that she tried to do that didn't get completed because she just couldn't do them. 
And so that's the that's kind of the self-awareness, I think, is that you are focusing on one piece of your life per month is what she's doing. And there were things that she just sort of like gave up on because it just never was going to happen. So I think that's Mm -hmm. kind of what 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 was interesting to me about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But just to break this down to how I see it is that you're identifying what makes you happy, but you're also identifying what doesn't. And I think that that's a key because I think sometimes we focus so much on what would make us happy that we're not paying attention necessarily to what's not making us happy, which if we eliminate some of that, maybe we would be happier. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure this out, Pete. Like, (laughs) you know, I still have so many questions. I need to get her on the show so I can ask her. Um, Yes. And then the second piece to that is setting goals. I say goals. She says resolutions um, about how to create, you know, more happiness and less of the other stuff. And then three, focus on one area at a time. So this is really saying I'm going to focus on my marriage and I'm going to do some of these things differently. I'm going to have a new approach to this. So you're going to do something a little bit different, just like we talked about last last week. You mm-hmm. know, today I have a, a new opportunity to do something different. So um, again, what she does is she takes one year to complete this project. Each month she has a specific area that she's working on. So January was boosting energy. So she talked about um, nutrition and, and uh, exercise and things that would boost her energy. February was about um, her marriage. And there was like a chapter on parenting. And I mean, there's just all you can, you can check out the book to see all the different things that, that mm-hmm. she worked on. Everybody's going to have different topics, obviously. Um, have a lot of highlights from this book, a lot of ideas on, oh, wow, if I did that, maybe that would, you know, change something. Um, as I said, I'm still processing a lot of what I'm learning and trying to figure out what to do with this information. And I know that I know our listeners can relate to that. Um, you read an, a book about ADHD. There's these great, fantastic strategies. But what now? Like, what do yeah. you do with them? Right. How do you really implement them? And and I'm still kind of trying to, to figure that out. But I did figure out where I wanted to start. And that's where mindfulness comes in. And that's where I was inspired by my other client. Mm-hmm. Because we've talked about mindfulness um, here and there. We've talked about our own meditation practices. I'm not real great with the consistency of, of meditation. Um, and what I was what I was finding when I was reading this book is that I sort of slipped on my mindfulness too. Hmm. And that makes me wonder if that's why I'm questioning, am I happy? Am I not yeah. happy? Yeah. Because maybe I'm not paying enough attention to you know, the daily stuff. So that's where I'm starting. Uh, And just to kind of tell people a little bit more about what mindfulness is, it really is about paying attention to what you're paying attention to. It's about taking in what's around you. Um, And what's so great to me about mindfulness versus meditation, and I think meditation is great, don't get me wrong. I just think that mindfulness is easier to practice because you can turn it on and off you can do the same thing with meditation too. I I understand that. But for me personally, mindfulness is easier to do. Um, and it's been really important to me because we mentioned, uh, Pete and I were talking about my, I'm celebrating my sister's 50th birthday and that's why I'm going to Hawaii. That's why I went to Hawaii. Yes, that's why I will have gone to Hawaii. <laughs> I will have gone to Hawaii. <laughs> and he asked me how I felt about her turning 50. And I said, what's a stronger um, reaction for me is not her turning 50, but it's the point that my son only has three years left with us until he goes to college. To me, that that hits harder, and which gives me much more reason to follow or to practice mindfulness. So Mm -hmm. when I have moments with him, when I'm watching him do sports, um, even if we're just, you know, at the dinner table, being more mindful of the conversations and um, having that bond, you know, that connection is really important. And, um, and that's what that, that's what that is. It's just really paying attention um, and be more intentional. I think, you know, uh, this this comes back to a, a question my son asked me a long time ago. We I don't even know how we got to it. I think we were talking about what word, you know how sometimes people do resolutions and they do words. They'll say like the word of the year. I don't year. know what you mean. 
Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, you're t- sort of themes, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. my favorite word is intention. It's, it always has been. And he asked me, you know, why is intention your favorite word? And I said, well, for me, how I explained it to him is that it means that I've thought I have thought through what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So what, whatever it is, it has some kind of meaning and some kind of purpose. And I'll often ask myself, especially like with work projects or, or even like, you know, if there's a project around home that I want to do or a personal project, you know, what is the intention behind me making this decision? And what happens is it really does make me kind of take that time to reflect and pause for a moment Mm -hmm. and really think about, okay, is this staying within my values? Is this something that's really important to me? Am I staying within my boundaries? Am I focusing on what's important to me? And it gives you that space to really kind of think about. Um, And, and, you know, mindfulness is certainly a strategy that we can help with ADHD. And this is what I was talking to my client about because it can, it, it strengthens your attention skills. It allows you to pay closer attention to what's happening to you right now. Uh, you're more aware of your surroundings, how you're feeling. Again, that power of pause allows you to think before you react so that it, it really can help with impulsivity. Plus, it decreases the, the stress and anxiety, right? Because what you're doing is you're letting go of past thoughts and you're letting go of future thoughts. You really mm-hmm. are just focusing on what's right now. And um, the other benefit to me is that it really does make me feel more connected. It makes me feel more connected to the experience um, that I'm experiencing at the time. So there is this great... Uh, resource. It's called The Mindfulness Prescription for Adult ADHD. It's a book. And uh, she opens up the book with an exercise. And I thought it would be kind of fun, Pete, if we did this with our listeners right now. And if you led them through it. Oh, well, I can certainly do that. Yes. In, in fact, let's uh, let's cue a little meditation. Pay attention to where you are right now. Shift your attention to your present moment sensations. If you're sitting, how is your body making contact with the chair? Do you notice any pressure points? If you're standing, What is your body posture? Now shift to your feet. Notice any sensations, such as pain or tingling. Maybe you feel nothing. Now shift to our hands. What are your hands doing? What are they touching? How does it feel? Are you in it? Do you feel good? Yeah. Okay. So (laughs) I'm ready to fall asleep. (laughs) I'll tell you what happens when you, when I just did it and what happened the very first time I did it is you do notice things that you didn't notice before. For example, oh, my left foot kind of hurts a little bit, Mm -hmm. you know, or the way that I had my hands folded when I start paying attention to how my hands are folded, this is what happened just now. I'm like, this really isn't the most comfortable position for me because now Mm -hmm. I'm feeling the pressure of one hand over the other. It's just a different experience. You know, it reminds me when I was in, I I think I I was probably in preschool, maybe kindergarten, first grade. It was, it was one of the grades where we still have nap times. Uh Uh-huh. Right. And uh, I'll, I, Really, I mean, this is ridiculous. This is a 40-year memory, right? Uh, That has an impact uh, on you. Right. This was a big one. And it's one I use to this day when I can't struggle, when I struggle with sleep. And I think it it actually works in other places, too. You're laying down, and you flex your toes. You stretch and flex your toes and then relax them. And then you flex and stretch your the, the 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 arch of your foot 
and then relax it. Then you stretch and flex your ankle and you relax it. And then your calves and you work all the way up your body until you have stretched and flexed and then relaxed every single muscle. And what you discover is, first and foremost, you have muscles that you didn't know you had. Right, uh, right. But yeah. second, you realize that you have now intentionally relaxed your body in a way that just saying, okay, now I'm relaxed does not do. You have to you have to go into relaxing with its work. It's work to slow down. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what this kind of mindfulness for me. That's a mindfulness thing. When I'm super stressed out, when I can't sleep, I, I take that activity and it actually puts me in a different space. You know, I do something very similar. It's just that I, I start in a different way. So when I lay down to go to sleep, I start actually with my head and I start to notice, okay, where am I tense? And it's always in my like mouth and my jaw. So mm -hmm. I'll, re I'll release that. And mm -hmm. then I will notice my hands are always tense. And so then I'll release the, the hands. And so I kind of go from head yeah. down, but it is, it's so interesting because it, it, it's that practice. I almost have to do it every single night. Right. Because if I don't, I, I won't fall asleep as fast because I'm a lot more tense than I even realize I am. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. That's true. It's mindfulness. I mean, that's 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 definitely and you know, I think that um when you do it, it's just interesting because you it is just a different experience and um you can try it anywhere, right? We just did it on the show. You can try it when you have dinner. You can try it the next time that you have a conversation with someone and just yes. say, I'm gonna be, you know, in my mind, I'm gonna be very present here and listen and and you're gonna notice different things when you go for a walk. If you really are listening and 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 paying attention to what you're seeing and using those senses, you're gonna notice things that you didn't notice before and it does right. for me it makes me feel more connected you know to ourselves to others to nature um you know i think that there's some research too about how it builds the memories you know more intensely you're going to remember that moment more if you're paying more attention to it and mm -hmm. and uh, so anyway all in all it's this journey of mindfulness and happiness and and uh trying to kind of figure out what that looks like this show makes me happy. Yes, it does. Yeah. Me too. I know I, that. You know, uh, let me tell you, and this will be, uh, uh, so for folks who don't know, we don't do this very often, but this show is actually, um, uh, uh, this show, all, all the shows on the Rash Pixel FM network are blessedly sponsored by Audible. And as a result, uh, you can get the audiobook version of The Happiness Project for free if you are interested in it uh, oh. by taking advantage of the Audible trial opportunity. Uh, you know, uh, Audible is amazing. I've been a member for 17 some odd years, I think, now and have hundreds and hundreds of books in my uh, in my library. I just love it. Uh, you can get this free audiobook download and 30-day free trial of the service by just visiting, and this is important, www.audibletrial.com slash the ADHD podcast. Podcast. Uh, you can choose from 180,000 or more titles uh, for, you know, iPhone, Android, Kindle, other MP3 player for sure. But uh, if you're interested in checking out this book that Nikki's talking about, uh, you can get it for free, uh, The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin. And, you know, check out the rest of the library. You might find some other books that you, uh, you'd you like to pick up and read. What I love about it is you can change the speed f uh, of the book. So if you, you can, if you're quick, if you can interpret, what I noticed is I can read I, I can listen really fast, right? I, I can listen and take in books much faster than I sometimes can read them. So it's fantastic. So that's it. Uh, www.audibletrial.com slash the ADHD podcast. Sign up for the free trial. Search for The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin. You can download it for free right now. There you go. Isn't there you that go. fancy? We yeah. don't do that very often, but it's a nice way to, I don't to think get we the book ever for have, free. So that's great. Yeah. 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 Fancy. There you go. We are fancy. Uh, we're, <laughs> look at how fancy we are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, anyhow, that's the that's the news. This is a great, uh, a, a, a fantastic uh, a subject. I'm so glad you brought this up, and uh, this mindfulness piece, man, it so so drives my ADHD. Absolutely, yeah. such yeah. a big impact. Uh, thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to this show. Thanks to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast uh, for uh, supporting us and supporting this very live stream. We sure appreciate doing it. Every Friday, it's a highlight of my Friday. Highlight of my entire week is doing this show uh, with Nikki and, you know, sharing with you that I've never had a LaCroix before right now. And I, I quite enjoy it, this LaCroix. Oh, I've never had one either. Yeah, it was a gift. Somebody oh. gave me water. 
That's anyway, nice. <laughs> thanks everybody for downloading and listening to the show. We appreciate your time and your attention. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you next week right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. <laughs>